If you're on this channel, you're probably here because you want to learn how to make videos, which would make you a beginner or at most an early intermediate video creator, which probably means you most likely don't have a fancy expensive camera. Well, here's a confession. Neither do I. My most expensive camera is the Sony a6400. Now this little guy is quite a beast. Fast and accurate autofocus, desirable color science, and fairly good in low light considering the APS-C sensor. Aside from a... Aside from the fact that I can't fucking speak, aside from all these cool features, I rarely got to use it on professional shoots. It arrived maybe two weeks before this whole pandemic caused worldwide lockdowns and mandated stay-at-home orders for us non-essential workers. Stopping the spread, flattening the curve, I am all down for it. But before all that, all my videos were shot on a Canon Rebel SL2. Up until late last year when I upgraded to the Sony a6300, which isn't a fancy camera either. Let's play a little game. I'm gonna throw some video clips on the screen from my portfolio and you guess which cheap ass camera I shot it with. I'll reveal the answers after a few seconds of playback. Okay, so I threw some extra footage in there from my Canon T5 and my iPhone, so sorry if you got those wrong. But my main point with all of this is, to a degree, it doesn't matter what you shoot with if you know its limitations and you know how to maximize your shots. You can still get client-worthy footage on a cheap camera. When I first got started in real estate videography, all I had was my Canon SL2. Now, Canon's Rebel line is typically for beginners, and back then, that's what I was. But I didn't want to waste time and wait to save up for a fancy camera before starting to offer my services. Instead, I just accepted the SL2's limitations in both low light and dynamic range. So I just downloaded the free CineStyle picture profile and purchased a $100 denoiser plugin to compensate for my noisy footage. And my clients were none the wiser. There are a few things that can help make your videos look awesome, even if you're shooting with a cheap camera. How good your video looks to your audience can be improved by filming something that's already awesome regardless of camera presence. This is why weddings look so good because everyone is dolled up, there's decorations everywhere, and the venues are usually over the top bougie. Luxury real estate is another example. Breathtaking architecture combined with tasteful interior design is always fun to watch. And of course, anything scenic. I mean, why do you think everyone loves drone footage so much? If you film what people think is already amazing, they're going to think the same about your video. Now, this doesn't mean you have to limit yourself to filming only dope shit. But keep in mind, hey, Hi. my girlfriend just walked in. in I'm in productions. Oops. You're gonna watch me do this? Hmm? You're gonna watch me do this? Okay, I lost my line. Um, hey, there's someone on me. <laughs> but an, but. You <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye but an awesome subject matter definitely helps in your video's perceived quality. So your camera may not shoot in 4K, and if you're really slumming it, it may not even have 1080p. In which case, bruh, what is you doing? Just kidding, it's okay not to worry. Investing in some fast lenses, preferably f1.8 or wider, helps out with the aesthetics of your video. It gives the illusion of image sharpness even if you're shooting at 720p. There are two kinds of sharpness, absolute sharpness and relative sharpness. Absolute sharpness is just how sharp you could get your image within the limitations of your camera 
and lens. Usually you would pair a very sharp lens along with a camera that could shoot in a high resolution. But that sounds expensive and we're cheap over here, right? So people like us will rely on relative sharpness, which is how sharp we could get our subject relative to other elements in the image typically the background. A lens opened up to f1.8 gives the illusion that our subject is super sharp and in focus because the background is going to be super blurry. I know what you're thinking, fast lenses are expensive, but I beg to differ. My first prime lens was a Youngno 50mm f1.8 and I bought it off of Amazon for like 50 bucks. I think Youngno has EF and Nikon mounts, but Sony users could try the Taika 35 millimeter F1.7 E mount. Now I've never used that one before, but I'm just letting you know what's available for fast lenses on a budget. This can be a glide cam, gimbal, or even a camera strap. Generally, what separates watchable footage from unwatchable footage is camera stability. Static shots should be on a tripod and camera movement should be assisted with some kind of stabilizer. You can go for a handheld look, but in my opinion, I mean, I can't watch anything handheld for too long. Think about the amount of technology Hollywood productions put into stabilizing their cameras. I mean, there's robotic arms, dollies, and that big ass vest that cameramen wear for that steady cam system. This is just the standard for how people view motion picture and you should make an attempt to get similar results with a cheap camera. There are some cheap stabilizers out there. The smaller and lighter your camera, the cheaper of a stabilizer you'll need. Nail your exposure. I know this isn't something you want to hear in a YouTube video, but it is always sound advice. Too often, I see potentially good videos be ruined because the shooter didn't expose properly. And when I say expose properly, all I mean is expose for what's important in the shot while not blowing out your highlights. Now, our cheap cameras have some limitations when it comes to dynamic range, so trust me, I know it's not always possible to get proper exposure. But here's a tip. Generally speaking, it's more forgivable if your shadows are crushed into blacks rather than your highlights be blown out. It's madness, I know, but hear me out. If you think about it, things in dark areas are difficult to see anyway. However, highlights are areas with lots of light and simple logic would say, if something's lit up, I should be able to see it. Like we never look up into the sky or out a window and see blotches of pure white. We're always able to see the color of the sky, the shapes of the clouds, and what's on the other side of that window. By avoiding overexposure and keeping as much highlight information as possible, your videos will look more professional and realistic. Good exposure is especially important for post-production too. Codecs for these types of cameras aren't the best and pushing the image around too much in post can lead to artifacts and degrade image quality. It's best to not trust your camera's LCD screen. It may look good because the screen's brightness along with the ambient lighting may just be favorable for your eyes, but it's most likely not what the camera is actually recording. Easiest way to make sure you're exposing correctly for your scene is to use your camera's histogram. The histogram is giving you an objective reading of what the sensor is seeing. And if you have to, bring extra lights to light up your subject. There are always budget-friendly options for lighting and it's way cheaper than buying a new camera just for the dynamic range. What I'm trying to say with all of this is if you have tasteful creativity along with a knack for storytelling, a cheap camera shouldn't hold you back from making the videos you want. Click right here and subscribe to my channel and I'll show you what a cheap ass camera could do. In the description below, I have a link to my Patreon profile. Clicking it will give you the option to support me and this channel with a small contribution. This is Kevin Mendoza, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.